I got sucked in by the magical allure of the theater when Nancy Grasberger got sick and I took over her part in the school play. <laughs> that was in second grade. And from then on, theater was a huge part of my life. And although I didn't go into it professionally, opting for a family home and regular meals, I threw myself into community theater. And I found out that the theater is a breeding ground for superstition. No whistling in the dressing room and no peacock feathers on the stage because they symbolize the evil eye. Wishing an actor good luck is bad luck, don't do it. Saying break a leg to an actor is good luck, so do that. I respected the people who believed, but I didn't buy into any of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Until I stage managed my first show, Wait Until Dark. Now, as a stage manager, I was the backstage god. I could say, let there be light, and there be lights. I could say, bring on the thunder, and the theater would reverberate with the sound. Nothing happened unless I called it. I loved it. <laughs> now, We Don't Tell Dark is a challenge even for a seasoned stage manager. It deals with a blind woman, Susie, who is being stalked by a trio of thugs headed up by Mr. Rote. There are lots of sound and light cues and even special effects. And there's a part where the theater, where the stage is totally dark. I wasn't worried though, because I had a five-star rating backstage and this was a trifecta of community theater. We had the best director in the area, an A-list cast, and we were performing in a real theater. Not an auditorium or a church or a public restroom, <laughs> but a fully equipped theater. One night we were chatting and I said, do you remember when that show, Macbeth, <gasps> a collective gasp echoed in the theater? What, what? Diane, we never say that name in the theater. <laughs> One must always refer to it as the Scottish play. And now, you have fucking cursed us. <laughs> well, I, I kind of remembered it has something to do with real witches being really pissed off by the, way, by the way Shakespeare portrayed them, and they put a curse on the show. And these people really believed it. I was going to have to win their trust back and show them that I wasn't going to let anything happen to this show. I was in charge. So everything went great until one of the last rehearsals where the lead actress slipped on the stage, knocked her head, and was out cold. She had to be taken to the ER. It was an accident. Then we were at opening night, and I was in pursuit of the perfect show where nothing goes wrong. Midway through the run, I realized right before curtain that nobody from the prop crew has shown up. But this never happens. So I run around making sure everything's where it should be. And the only thing I can't find is a negligee that's supposed to be in the dryer. And one of the thugs comes in, opens up the dryer, takes it out and holds it up and kind of ogles it. Well, I found a negligee, but it was plus size. So I asked the actor not to hold it up, but to just drape it over his arm and kind of finger the lace. So we get to that point in the show, and I'm going, please, 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 please. 
he takes it out of the dryer and whoop, he goes for the cheap laugh. I, I'm devastated. Maybe there is something to this curse. I mean, especially since after the show, they tell me that the negligee was in the dryer all along. Oh, I, I feel so bad. I mean, what can I do? I don't know how to reverse the curse. Towards the end of the run, we're right on track for a perfect show. We're at the end of the play. Now, this is where it gets really intense backstage. Rote is stalking Susie with a knife. There's one light left on the stage. She's knocked all the others out. Rote throws the knife. She picks up the lamp and smashes it into the sink, and the light goes out. Now, in stage manager talk, this is knife, light, sound. It has to go just like that. So I call it knife, light, sound, and what I get is knife sound lights, which means that Susie is holding the lamp when we hear it break, and then the light goes out. <laughs> oh, the whole show is ruined. The audience is laughing uproariously, which would be great if this was a comedy, <laughs> but it's a suspense thriller. My, my theater life is over. My five-star rating, five asterisks. Avoid this woman at all costs. I don't know what to do. I'm apologizing. I'm saying, just please give me another chance. You know, ease off a little bit. But if there was anything I could do, show me. Tell me what I have to do. And I'm so frustrated. I just go around in circles yelling every swear word I can think of. <laughs> and that, my friends is how you break the curse. <laughs> I shit you not. <laughs> Going around in circles and spewing random swear words reverses the curse of the show. I know, I Googled it. <laughs> and for the rest of the time, everything goes perfectly. We get our perfect show. I get my theater cred back, well, four and a half stars. And as for the curse of the Scottish play, I believe. <laughs> and so should you. <laughs>